Hey there, how's it going? The Brackies Game Jam 2022.1 took place February 20th through the 27th. Brackies is a name loved in the indie game dev space as a YouTube channel where many people, including a lot of you I would imagine, first learned how to use Unity and make games. I'll be honest, I didn't watch much of Brackies content. I enjoyed their occasional devlogs, but mostly what they made didn't apply to me because I don't use Unity. So I've never really been too involved in the Brackies community. On top of that, I've always had something else going on during the jams and I was unable to join. But for this one, the timing just worked out, and it's fun to jump into a huge jam every now and then to see how you do against thousands of other devs. Before we dig into the meat of the jam, I want to thank Southern New Hampshire University for sponsoring this video. Do you feel like your experience is holding you back from pursuing the career you want? Southern New Hampshire University has one of the largest accredited nonprofit online degree offerings in the country. They feature over 200 degree programs focused on getting you started in or advancing in a career that you'll love. One program I think you might really like is the Game Art and Development Program, an online game dev degree that zeroes in on game art creation, where you will build a portfolio of front-end designs and concepts. You'll use industry standard 3D and 2D software to create worlds, creatures, and UI, all while focusing on 3D modeling and sculpting, illustration and digital painting, rigging and character animation, as well as lighting, shading, and texturing. There are no set class times allowing you to work when and where you want. And if you started college and never finished, SNHU will let you transfer up to 90 credits so you don't have to completely start over. Southern New Hampshire University is radically affordable. Their online tuition rates are some of the lowest in the nation and haven't increased in over 10 years. They also feature an active community of students. Join clubs, attend mixers, and hang out with your fellow students. You can get the whole college experience entirely online. So if you want to kick off a new career or take your current one to the next level, click the link in the description to get more information and browse all their programs. The Brackies Jam is a week long, which is great because at this time I had quite a bit going on in my life. I was in the beginning stages of completely overhauling the schedule that I've been living for the last two years. So the plan, as always, is to keep the scope as small as I possibly can and focus on a core mechanic that hopefully is fun. The jam began on Sunday for me, but it wasn't until Monday that I was even able to sit down and start working on it. Even with a day of knowing the theme, I still had absolutely no ideas at this point. The theme is, it is not real. Themes are subjective, but I really like this one. I feel like it doesn't present an obvious mechanic that everyone's going to use. And because of that, it can be taken in so many different ways. But even though I really liked it, it's not a theme that triggered any ideas right away for me, that's for sure. When I have the time, I love the opportunity to sit down and brainstorm with my Twitch chat. This time, the theme seemed to have a lot of people stuck, so we pulled up a document and threw a bunch of different ideas at the page, and then opened it up that if anybody liked any idea they saw, they were free to take it and do whatever they wanted with it. There are seriously so many ways that it is not real could go. Dreams, alternate dimensions, disguises, birds. Are they real? I don't know. What I did know is that after making a long list, there were two ideas that I was gravitating towards. The first one is a game where you need to keep a character from realizing they're in a TV show. Kind of like being a director or producer on The Truman Show if you've seen that movie. If you haven't seen that movie, you should. It's fantastic. And second was making a play off of the game that I think most of us played at some point in our youth, The Floor is Lava. I wrote out a couple of concepts of how each one could play, and while I really like the Truman Show-like idea, I just don't think I'll have enough time to really execute on it in a way that would be fun for the player. Or me creating it for that matter. On the other hand, running and jumping over lava, I think I can do that, and I know exactly what I want to do with it. A while back, I joined Mrs. Zizz's 4 Game Devs Jam off the same art kit challenge where I made a top-down platformer. I thought it was alright at the time, but when I made a video where I went back and replayed it about a year later, I wholeheartedly have no idea why I made some of the choices I made in that game. It ended up just being way too hard and had some extremely questionable design decisions that I look back at now and wonder why I did it. There's a card up top if you'd like to see just how bad I think it is now. People have suggested going back and updating it, but I like to just leave my jam games as what they are. They're the product of what I made with the time frame that I had, and I like to leave it at that. Not to mention that going back to the spaghetti code mess that is game jam code is borderline masochism in my opinion. But what I can do is make the concept again with the knowledge I've learned and hopefully this time make it more enjoyable. If you don't know, there is already a great The Floor is Lava game out there called Hot Lava. It's made by Clay, the same studio that makes Don't Starve. And it's a really fun first-person parkour game. I was lucky enough to be a beta tester back in the day. This game came out back in 2018 and no one ever really talks about it, so I just wanted to show it off for a minute since it aligns pretty well with what we're making here. One inspiration that I did take from the game is the way that the levels are just all lava with obstacle courses of everyday furniture. Meaning that the levels don't need to look like a normal room with furniture in realistic positions. 
So to make sure I knew what I was getting myself into, I listed out the core mechanics of what I was going to need for the game. At this stage, I always overscope just a little, knowing that several of these features will be cut for various reasons. But I add them in because at this point, I don't know which one of these is the overscope, so I leave myself the ability to cut stuff as needed. But I do still try to be reasonable and not add in too much or every idea that I have. Alright, on to the build, and I've got a decision to make. The way I had implemented the jump in my game O-Rats is, well, to use a technical term, jank. And it just so happens that Construct has an example project with top-down platformer movement. I'll be honest, there's a little too much going on here, but I do really like the jump. So I stripped out everything else and just kept the movement and ground detection. I added some temporary lava to replace the space background, and gave the player the ability to run. And unlike in another game that I made, there's no stamina bar this time, so you can run as much as you want. I then had to change it so that falling off the platforms no longer kills the player, but allows them to walk because, wait for it, the lava is not real. In this game, if you fall in the lava, your imagination is broken and you are now on the carpet. I made it so you can't jump while you're on the floor and need to use a bounce pad to get back up. It's a super simple effect, but just turning the lava on and off gives a really nice jarring feeling, selling the idea that we've snapped back into reality and our imagination's now gone. And by making the bounce pads activated after you touch them while on top of the platform first, we have a built-in checkpoint system. After that, it was time to do what I think is the unfun part of any game jam, making things like transitions and the pausing and menuing systems. A bugbear that I have is that if your game doesn't use the mouse, then I firmly believe that the menu should be able to be navigated without the mouse as well. So I took some time making sure that the whole game functions for both keyboard and gamepad controls and doesn't require the mouse in any capacity. Since the lava is not real, I don't want the player to die, which means there's no actual lose state. But if there's no lose state, then what is the incentive for the player? Yes, there is finishing the level, but once they know they can't die, it loses a bit of tension. The simplest answer I had was to add a timer. I love timers, they're great for adding tension, but which way do we want it to go? We could go with a set time for the level, so the player needs to race the clock to make it to the end before time runs out. Or we can just have the game track how long it takes for you to complete the level, that way you can set your own bars for success. I chose the latter because I feel like adding a time limit to the level violates the no-lose condition concept that I really want to go with. This way if you fall, you're just losing time, which allows the player to assign how much that matters to them. But we are all people, and we like to have our numbers be better than the ones before, so there is a little drive in just general humans to do better each time. I also thought it would be a cool look to have the game just start with the character playable on the menu. This allows the player to immediately start using and getting used to the movement mechanics in an area that feels free to move around in without any direct goals. At this point, it's Thursday, and I really need to start getting a visual style figured out. I made and animated a top-down kid character and began drawing furniture. I pretty quickly made a table, and as I started on another kind of table, I realized I should probably see this with the lava because that's how the player's going to see it most of the time, which means I should probably figure out what the lava's actually going to look like. I then proceeded to spend a literal hour trying a variety of different lava effects, which was time well spent because I didn't like any of them, and I decided it was going to be a problem for future me, so I moved on. I didn't have a plan for what furniture I was going to make, I just sort of made stuff. So if you're wondering why I included one item of furniture over another, or why there's like eight couches, it's mostly because of speed, time, and I didn't think of it. My Twitch chat really wanted a Roomba for some reason. The plan was to have it be a moving platform, but I realized that implementing that would actually be more difficult than I had initially thought. I'd have to rewrite the movement code so the character would actually move along with it while it was standing on it, and realize that just wasn't in the cards with the time I had left. So it's going to be out of batteries and stationary. Offstream, I made even more environment tiles, including some simple walls. And usually, Future Me doesn't show up until the very end of the jam, but I need to figure out what this lava is going to look like now, so we got to deal with that issue. Everything I've been trying so far has been giving me really strong vibes of what I did for the Team C's jam, and I don't like the way the water looks in that game, so I need to shift gears. I think I was just trying to get too fancy and add in too much detail and too many little effects. To stick with the NES look and feel that I've got going, I stripped all of the lava back to only three colors, and other than the orange, there's only a few pixels on each tile. To keep the little ripple effect that I did like, I separated each of the three colors into their own objects layers and applied the wave effect to each of them so they moved independently. At this point, we're now in our final day with only 11 hours left, so let the level design rush begin. This is always a time-consuming process, so I opted for less is more. I tried to make some very simple jumping levels, nothing too complicated or hard. I stopped at 5 so I could focus on the menu and tutorial area to make sure that everything is as clear as I could possibly make it for the player. I made a little jumping area with instructions that change based on whether you're on the floor or not. 
I stole an idea from theme parks as well, with the tutorial wrapping around and instead of letting the player out in a gift shop, I have them go through the credits. I've never tried that before and I kinda like it. To allow the player to go at their own pace, there's no time limit if you go into the levels at the top. This lets them play through the first time without being burdened with the feeling of needing to move quickly. Instead, they can practice the levels as much as they'd like and then do one full run of all the levels for their best time. And in the speedrun mode, this is where the checkpoints become a big thing because you need to run back to them whenever you fall, meaning that falling in one place can hurt your time more than falling in another place. Oh Rats was way too hard, requiring really finicky, difficult long jumps. So when laying out these levels, I actually made sure that you could make it through all of them without needing to ever run. That does mean that in a lot of places, if you do run, you can jump and completely skip over other obstacles allowing you to move through the levels quickly. But if you fall, remember you're gonna be adding more time because you gotta get back, so it's a risk-reward system. I worked all day and night polishing as much as I possibly could, as well as playtesting a good amount in the browser to catch any bugs in the export. And after all that testing, the jam ended at 3 a.m. my time. I was able to submit the game with four minutes and 36 seconds left on the clock. It was a mad dash and I at least crossed the finish line. I then worked on making the page look nice by creating a banner, a cover image, screenshots, but alas, there were so many people trying to submit their game at the deadline that itch completely broke. So after an hour of trying and having nothing change, I went to bed around 4 in the morning absolutely exhausted, but really pleased with what I had made. And in the end, this is Lava Leap. You begin in an interactive menu that lets you explore the movement and get used to the feel. Heading into the How to Play section gives you an area to jump around as well as information that is contextual to being on the platforms or on the floor. Because the lava's not real, falling in it doesn't hurt you. I did add some text to encourage the player to jump in the lava just in case they were good enough to not fall in. That way they wouldn't miss what I'm trying to show, which is when you fall in the lava you need to head back to a cushion checkpoint to bounce yourself back up to the platforms. The game consists of five simple levels where you need to jump across the furniture to reach the goal. Along the way you can knock cushions off the furniture to create checkpoints which reduces the amount of backtracking you need to do if you miss a jump. There's also a speedrun mode where you begin on level 1 and are timed on how long it takes you to complete all five levels in a row. And that's the game. There's a link in the description if you'd like to give it a try for yourself. Because of the life changes I mentioned earlier, I'm really late in getting this devlog out, but one good thing of that is I can actually share the results of the jam. The jam had a fantastic turnout with over 1,600 games submitted by the end. And after all the votes were tallied, Lava Leap ended up in 19th place overall, with an 11th place in fun, which I'm really proud of. Being top 20 out of 1,641 entries really is amazing. And I'm super thankful to every one of you that played and left a rating. Checking through the comments, most people seem to really enjoy the game. There were a few people pointing out a few issues that unfortunately always happen in a Game Jam game. This game is not perfect and there definitely are some issues like strange platform interactions and there is an issue with the high score saving properly unfortunately. Some people also had some difficulty maneuvering the character and I think having the player turn in the direction they're moving may have been the cause of that. In O-Rats the player didn't actually rotate and I think it felt a little more controllable in the air. When I inevitably revisit this mechanic in a year or so, I'll try having the the player not rotate and see how it feels. But that's it for the game and the results. I had a great time in the Brackies Jam and I'm really pleased with the way the game came out in the end. Again, if you'd like to play the game, there's a link in the description, as well as a link to all of the other games that were submitted for the jam. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and maybe leave a comment, why not? It helps get YouTube to share it with more people and it just makes me happy. And while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell thingy. I'd like to give a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters, especially my video producer and higher tier patrons like Baron Earth, Enmark Games, Lauren Morgan, Nightfall, Motsi Makes, Nazar Salim, Pixelator Gadzi, Salty Pretzel, Scott Hansen, Soapy Gnome, Some Dude, Straight Up Gruntled, Warren Steven Rose, and Yanni Boy. You're all amazing people, and I cannot thank you enough for the continued support. Don't forget to check out the sponsor of this video, Southern New Hampshire University. Click the link in the description to get a jump start on your career today. I hope you enjoyed this look into the jam, and I will talk with you next time. Have a good one. Later.